Good morning, everyone. It's a very beautiful day. Such a awesome talks we just had. But before we start, I want you to do something. Turn around and with the best smile you've got, say to at least two or three people how beautiful, how awesome, how great they look today. And if you happen to be single and sitting next to the person you like, maybe this is your opportunity to take it. <laughs> Go and say to at least two or three people how great, how amazing they look today. Do it. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. You have ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it. <laughs> say, hey, you look awesome today. You look great today. You look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, feels good, right? Feels nice, doesn't it? It's amazing how just few words can change our mood. And this is one of the many magical things about language. It is said that language is what separates intelligent forms of life from non-intelligent so forms of life. And a lot has been said about this matter throughout history. But in recent days, a very productive conversation has taken place thanks to scientists like Dr. Lera Bortitsky, Rafa Nunez, and others. And I want to take this opportunity to recognize Dr. Lera Bortitsky as my source of inspiration for this talk. Now, continuing with our talk, how many of you, like me, have gotten to a new place, a new city you don't know? And the first thing you do to get to any places you want to get is to open Google Maps, right? And you start navigating. And then the voice, the voice says something like, head northeast toward Charles Avenue. Mm -hmm. And then now you're very confused. First, because you don't know where the hell Charles Avenue is. And secondly, you have absolutely no idea which way is northeast. And I personally don't know anyone that can, without using a compass, point which way is northeast. But Dr. Lea Bortiski discovered that there are Aboriginal people living in Australia, like the Kuktayur or the Kukuyilimir people, that instead of using uh, words with relative sense, like left or right, they use absolute cardinal words, like north, south, east, or west, for everything, and I mean everything. So for example, I'm standing now here, right? And for the Kuktayur people, maybe this arm is my southern arm. If I turn this way, now it's my western or eastern arm. I don't really know which way is which, but if I spoke the language, I'll be required to perfectly stay orientated, just to be able to say hello. For example, the Kuktayur way of greeting is saying something like, hey, which way are you going? To what you respond something like, I'm coming far from the southwest and I'm heading northeast by the volcano. See? Just to be able to pass by a trivial greeting. Ooh. Hello? Hello? Oh no, it's nice work. Just to be just to be able to pass by a trivial greeting, you need to stay perfectly orientated. If you ask a six year old boy from this community to point northeast, he will do it without hesitation. And as Dr. Borodisky puts it, we used to think that doing such things were impossible for humans, for some biological skills. For example, unlike ants, we don't have sensors in our back that measure the cell cell bodies. But these people have proven to us that if our languages requires us to do, we are perfectly able to stay orientated. Now, a lot of people think mathematics are a language, and I believe so. And there is one cool concept taken from the mathematics, and it's the infinite set of numbers. And there is one Hebrew term called Aleph. The Aleph numbers are used to describe the size of an infinite set of elements that are well ordered. Things like all the odd numbers, think about them. You know how they look like, you know how they behave, and you know they start in one, then three, five, seven, all the way to infinity. This is a different conception of infinity. We used to think about infinity like something that grows without boundaries, something that has no beginning nor end. But in this case, an infinity set 
of numbers is well defined. We know exactly where it starts and we know exactly the content of this group. This challenges the way we think about the universe or the world. There is one great paradox called the Zeno paradox. And I'm going to give you my version of it. Do you know that you can actually hold an infinity set between your two bare hands? Put your hands in front of one another. Now, let's say there's about 25 centimeters between your hands. Now you move half of that distance. Now that your hands are more or less 12.5 centimeters away from each other. Now you move half of the previous distance you just move. That's 6.25. Then half of the previous distance you move. That's 3.125. And if you keep repeating this for another 97 times, your hand will be 1.9721 times 10 to the minus 29th power centimeters away from each other, but still quite not touching each other. You can go on an infinite number of times, and they will never touch each other. How cool is that? Infinity is such a cool concept to wrap our minds around. And many of you never thought about infinity in this way before this talk. But our language allows us to put such concepts in our si inside of our minds. But do you know there are languages in the world that do not have numbers, do not have words or nouns for specific quantities? They may use the same word for a half or 2.5 as for one. They may use the same word for 700 or 500 million. So explaining this that I just just explain to you will be a nearly impossible task. To start, they don't have a concept of a half. Now imagine you belong to this community, you only speak that language, and then you have the idea to maybe, I don't know, build a computer or build a radio. How can you build a computer or a radio without numbers like we do? So certainly there, the language we speak puts a limit to, our, to us. So what is my point with all of this? The language or the languages we speak may enhance or limit some of your cognitive abilities. So it wouldn't be cool to stay perfectly orientated and to be able to comprehend complex mathematical concepts? It would be really cool. And we would be able if we spoke languages like Cook Prior. So the first thing that I want you to leave today is learn as many languages as you can. So you may increase your repertoire of cognitive abilities. Now, another very, very interesting phenomena related with the specific language one speaks is the perception of the events. Dr. Bordiski found out that while describing what happens here, Spanish speakers will tend to remember or describe the situation, something like an accident or the face broke. While English speakers will tend to remember who did it, something like he broke the face or he knocked out, knocked out the base. So I decided to test that out. I did my homework, I went to Facebook, and I texted a dozen of my friends. Half of them will be native Spanish speakers that do not speak any other language but Spanish, and the other half will be native English speakers that do not speak any other language but Spanish. And I showed them the, this picture. And the first thing that I noticed is that Spanish my Spanish speaker friends tend to richly describe the situation. So I ask them just to describe using three to five words. They will say stuff like, he broke the base, but he didn't have intention to do so. He, uh, the base broke, but it wasn't his intention. So no matter how they build the sentence, they always add, he had no intention. But this English speakers will plainly say, he broke the base, or he backed up too far and knocked off, knocked off the, the base. I did the same experiment with this picture. The Spanish speakers, they, to my surprise, they describe it as a toast, un brindis. And the English speakers will say they are celebrating or they are making toast. Know this, the, the Spanish speakers will focus on the events, what is going on. Well, the English speakers will focus on the doers of the action. I wanted to go deeper of what I learned from Dr. Boritsky's talk, so I started reading articles about cognition and language and 
language and behavior. And something stuck on my mind. I learned that languages like Turkish, for you to be grammatically accurate, you are required to pack the sentence with context. So in English, I can say something like, Anna was sitting in the park. And that's grammatically accurate. But in Turkish, to be grammatically accurate, you have to change the verb ending depending on how you obtain information about Anna. Whether you saw her sitting in the park, someone told you, or you read about it. That was very fascinating to me. So I did my homework again. I went to Facebook and I texted my Turkish friend. So I asked her, how would you say Anna was sitting in the park if you saw her or if someone told you? So she told me, Anna Pakta Otoyordu. This means I saw her. Or Anna Pakta Otoyordomus. This means someone told me about it. So the end to is for I saw her. The end mus means if someone told me. I say, awesome. But this was my real question. I asked her, do you think gossiping is different in Turkish? And she laughs and says, no, gossiping is the same in every language. And I say, yeah, but one thing is to say Sam is a bad man, and a different thing to say I heard Sam is a bad man. She say, yeah, I've got what you mean. So I say, what if someone tells you I, uh, Sam broke the car? It's different if someone tells you with the end do, if someone tells you with the end moves. Doesn't that make you approach the information in a different way? She say, yeah, I got what you mean. But we don't think about it, we just have it from the context. If someone tells me with the end do, it makes more sense if someone tells me with the end moves. And I was, yeah, you're more likely to believe if they say with the end do. It's like, yeah, I'm saying the truth. But if you're telling me with the end moves, it's like, yeah, maybe the person that told me about it is a liar, or maybe it's the truth, but either way, I'm not 100% sure. And she said, yeah, of course, that's what I mean. So what is my point with all of this? You may speak a language that makes you more likely to focus on the events, like Spanish, or to focus on the doers of the action, it's English. Or like Turkish, that for you to be grammatically accurate, you need to pack with context your sentence. Either way, whatever the case is, you always choose how you deliver the information and which words you use. So the second thing that I want you to live with today is be fair when you communicate. To take, take, take this talk to an end, learning a new language may open your doors to unexpected high places. And I will humbly take myself as an example. I got to live for a whole year in the United States, all expenses paid, plane tickets, rent, tuition, even money to hang out. There I met the most incredible people and I have one of the best experiences of my life. I even got to travel to another, st another state like Florida or Arizona, all expenses paid. And now I'm living in Poland and I've traveled to another four different European countries. I lived in Spain for three months, all expenses paid. Am I, am I a genius? Am I super smart or gift? Trust me, I'm anything but intelligent or smart. If you don't believe me, you can ask my ex-girlfriend or my mom. They'll tell you right away. And I'm glad you, you laughed at that joke, because actually I had to ask for permission to do it. <laughs> but jokes aside, the only reason I got to experience all these things is because one day, four years ago, I decided to learn how to speak English. And I wasn't looking for a scholarship when I started learning English. But once I got the opportunities and I saw them, and I saw them I was able to get them and to catch them because I was unintentional prepared. Furthermore, learning a new language may affect the people that surround me. There is this friend of mine who goes to church with me. She's around 70 years old. And recently she decided to learn how to speak English. So I made a deal with her. I told her, you will practice your English with me and I will practice my Polish with you. This is her. Hello, my name is Aileen. I started to learn English five months ago. Hope you enjoy the talk. Bye. <laughs> she makes you feel inspired, doesn't she? So if she can, why can't we? And to a certain extent, similarly, we motivate and we encourage our neighbors, our family, our friends, our colleagues, when we learn a new language. So let's wrap it up. 
First thing I want you to live with today. Learn as many languages as you can, so you may increase or expand the repertoire of your cognitive abilities and get to experience life from a broader perspective. Second thing I want you to live with today. Choose wisely your words, so you may always make justice to yourself and to others when you communicate. The third thing is that learning a new language may help your dreams come true. And as our friend Irene taught us, it is never too late to change our life. Thank you very much.